chapter, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the various languages and tool chains that support WebAssembly. In the previous video, we took a look at mscripten and how we can use that to compile C or C++ code to WebAssembly. In this video, it's time to take a look at Rust. Now, I'm using Wasmpack, which is a collection of various Rust tools that, that support a compilation of Rust to WebAssembly. And again, I'm not going to go through the installation instructions. Those are covered on the web. So if you're following along, I'd encourage you to go and have a look and, and follow your platform-specific installation instructions. What you can see in front of you is a very simple Hello World application once again, very similar to the one that we looked at with, with um, mscripten, only this time the application is written in Rust. Now, if we look on the left hand side, we'll see that we've got a project that has all sorts of different bits and pieces. We've got a cargo file, we've got YAML files for various different build systems. And this is because uh, the Rust tool chain has a, a sort of template file that you can use to create a, a standard project that's all ready and set up for, for compilation. Whereas with mscripten, you can use a very simple uh, command line approach. Within Rust, there's a little bit more configuration required to actually get the, to get the compilation process working. So with WASM pack in place, I can build my application and target the web. Once this uh, compilation process is, is complete, we can see a new PKJ or package folder has appeared. And once again, we see the same sort of um, structure that we did within, within mscripten. We can see that there's a WebAssembly file. In this case, it's around about 19 kil kilobytes in size. And we can also see that it's uh, generated a JavaScript file. And once again, this is the bindings that are required to allow our Rust application to return a string, which is not natively supported by the underlying uh, WebAssembly runtime. Now, the Rust uh, tool chain doesn't actually output a test harness in the same way that mscripten does. So I've created my own small um, test harness here. So all I'm doing is uh, loading my, my JavaScript wrapper, which itself loads the WebAssembly module. It exports a couple of functions, init and greet. So firstly, I'm initializing uh, my WebAssembly module, which is what actually causes it to fetch the WebAssembly file itself. And then I'm just using console log and invoking my greet function. So the greet function is the one that's uh, written with with uh, Rust here. So now that this is compiled, I should be able to go over to my test. And if I if I refresh the page, you can see that hello world is indeed an output. We'll do the same that we did with the uh, C++ example. Do a quick change and confirm. Yes, as we can see that the, the code has been recompiled to WebAssembly and the output is, is updated accordingly. Now I'm going to follow exactly the same path that I did with uh, C++. I'm going to show a slightly more in-depth example that renders a Mandelbrot fractal. So here I've updated the code. Now, once again, this is a, a very conventional implementation of Mandelbrot. You'll notice a few warnings here. I haven't converted the C++ code into sort of more idiomatic Rust, and it's, it's complaining about my naming conventions. But this allows a, a simple sort of side-by-side -side comparison. Now, whilst the mscripten example was using the SDL APIs to render to a canvas, um, those APIs don't exist in Rust. That's an mscripten specific feature. Here we're using a, a Rust crate called WebSys. Now this allows, this provides uh, bindings to various DOM APIs and allows you to manipulate the DOM directly from, from within Rust. So here what we're doing is using the, the standard document get element by ID uh, method to to um, access the canvas. Um, you'll notice that, that the canvas is something that I've inserted directly into my page within the HTML file. Here we're going through the usual process of getting the 2D context. Um, we're creating the Mandelbrot set and then once again using the co conventional approach of using the image data API to, to basically set the, the, the full sort of pixels of, of, my, of my canvas. So if I rerun the build and then we look at the output, we can see that now it's rendered the Mandelbrot set to the canvas. 
So again, this is a very quick introduction to um, using Rust to create WebAssembly applications. I think it's highlighted some of the interesting differences between Rust and Emscripten. Emscripten supports various different um, historic or pre-existing C++ APIs, whereas Rust has has new and different APIs that it's it's um, bringing to to uh, to the, the WebAssembly ecosystem. Also, in common, both of them have the glue logic required to do um, type conversions or, or, or to allow it to take um, strings returned by either C++ or Rust and, and, and provide access to them within JavaScript. So in the next video, we're going to be having a look at assembly scripts.